This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before we go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. So for today's video, we are taking a look at my deck profile from which I took to a winner box yesterday and finished in 6th place. Now this wasn't an absolutely huge event, but of course a little bit more premier than the locals, I guess, if you want to put it that way. Uh, but yeah, we had a decent performance. We've been performing quite well over the last few weeks with this deck and I've been feeling really good about it and the changes that I've made over the last couple of weeks or so. Now the deck is still definitely not perfect by any stretch of the imagination but I'm really enjoying playing it and again it's very very rare I find myself in a situation where I look at my hand and think that this is fucking bullshit and I wish I was playing something else. We're having really positive results against a lot of the meta matchups such as base and things like that. I would hazard a guess that I've won far more of those than I've lost. Um, the only deck that we really have any major issues with is Flunderies of all things. Um, and that's usually because they open Shifter and then use it about six times in a row. So it is what it is. Other than that though, largely we're decent with our matchups overall. But I'll talk through uh, the ideas and stuff that are in this deck. What changes I've made over the last couple of weeks if you saw one of my older profiles. Um, what, what, what to work well and what maybe I'll consider changing going forward. Now quickly, before we get stuck into the profile, I do just want to say, if you're looking to pick up any Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. That is my team as well. And if you go ahead and use the code Rufio15 on their eBay store, link in the description, you'll get a nice 15% discount off your eBay order. But that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the deck profile. Okay, first up we have the Evoked part of our deck. We of course have Triple Alistair. Uh, well, yeah, you just need to play three of it. There isn't really much more to add to this. Uh, triple copies of Meltdown. This is still correct, of course. Uh, and then two copies of Invocation. I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's one of those cards that sometimes it feels like having the third one would be amazing. Um, sometimes you burn through the two and run out of ways to re you know recur them or whatever. Uh, and there's times where opening it with you know the pieces to make DPE and stuff would be quite nice as well. But to be honest with you, it's far more bricky than it is good most of the time. So you really do just want to search it. So I think overall, I think these ratios are perfect and I wouldn't change them. On to the Dogmatica package. So we've got triple copies of Ecclesia. Uh, you just really want to see this. It's really sad when you don't get to see both parts of your engine. Um, so for that reason, yeah, you absolutely have to play the three in my opinion. Uh, two copies of Maximus. Two of these has still been absolutely great. You're really actually quite happy if you open this along with the other parts. Uh, it's really good. And of course it becomes Dragoon fodder if you need it as well, which is quite nice. Uh, so yeah, it just doubles up. Sometimes I'll side the second copy out uh, along with the third one of these. So you have to game one, uh, but usually this is my starting packaging that works really well. And then, of course, a single copy of Fleur de Lis. Um, yeah, one seems absolutely fine. You never need more than one. You just want to search it and you, you don't really want to open it unless you've got the stones otherwise, which, yeah, you can't really uh, plan for that. And then two copies of Nadir Servant. Um, yeah, not much to say here. If this was at three, we play it at three. It's a two, so we play it at two. Next up onto one of our new inclusions for the deck. This was actually an idea that someone on the channel had mentioned and I figured I would try it out and it's been absolutely bonkers. So whoever that was that's out there, I apologise. I don't have your name, uh, but whoever you were, thank you very much. This has been great and you should definitely be running this. We're running Magician Souls. So uh, we're running triple copies of Souls. Uh, and then the two copies of Illusion of Chaos. So um, the ratios on these are kind of up in the air. You can do really whatever you want. But I would probably just... Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It works fine. Uh, you can run the prep if you want to run the prep as well. Uh, this could be three and uh, two and two. Uh, you could play whatever you like. But I really like this package of this size. It means I normally see at least either one of these or one of these. Um, yeah, and it's pretty good. You know, you can get rid of dead, dead cards. It's just helped a lot with the consistency and things like that. Which is something that the deck has struggled with a little bit, especially if you only see one part of your engine rather than both. You kind of want to see both, this just helps you get there. 
Um, it's massive hand trap bait. Of course, sending spells is not great, but if you're in a pickle where you need to make sure you resolve something else, that can always come up. Um, the other thing as well is the fact that this becomes an extra body. Now, that of course can help you get into vert, so that is something to think about. But there's times as well by late game you don't necessarily have options for that, and we'll go into that in a minute, what I've included in this deck, to try and give me some more options so that I can make extra use of the additional body I get on board. But overall, this has been absolutely fantastic, and if you have access to it, you should definitely be running this engine. Uh, the DPE package, I'm sure I really don't need to add anything to this. This card is absolutely fucking disgusting. Well, the card's pretty good, but the package is disgusting. Um, yeah, it's still absolutely insane. I think you have to play it. I guess if you don't have access to it, you can play the Goon package. But to be honest with you, this is just way stronger. Draw 2 is just... Yeah, and this deck is just crazy. You need it. And then on to some hand traps. So we've got triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Um, yeah, not much to add to this. Just... The most generically powerful hand trap, I think you need to run it. Uh, we've got triple copies of Ghost Ogre. Um, yeah, really strong again. Just having a really good format at the moment. We all know this is one of these cards that comes in and out of formats. At the moment, it's incredibly strong, and I think you need to run it. And triple copies of Infinite Impermanence. Uh, again, really, really strong. Just generically good at the moment. This could, you know, this could be Veilers, which kind of has some additional usage. Um, but to be honest with you... I guess the fact that it doesn't lose the talents and things like that comes up. And if you go in first, it's not terrible because you can just set it and it becomes uh, kind of like a secondary form of disruption if they're not careful. So just little things like that. I think Imperm is just that little bit better. And then on to the rest of the deck portion. Uh, so we've got triple copies of Pot of Prosperity. Uh, yeah, this card's absolutely bonkers. A lot of the time I'm only banishing the three, but there have been games where I'm just like, okay... I need to sacrifice the additional engines here to be able to make sure I can play the game. And that is a thing that sometimes comes up. Um, again, with the deck, if you don't see necessarily what you need to see, you can be in a lot of trouble in this deck. Um, so yeah, it's just really, really strong. And again, a lot of the time, just being able to see the three is enough of a dig to get you into another engine, which means you can get playing again, which is really, really cool. There's a little bit of conflict in there, uh, but there's only really one or two cards that it does conflict with in terms of the no-draw policy. Uh, Souls being one of them, of course. Um, but overall, not really too much of an issue, in my opinion. Uh, we have triple copies of Forbidden Droplet. The card's very, very strong. Um, yeah, it just, it just is what it is. It helps you break boards, which in the modern format you need to be able to do, otherwise you just lose on the spot. A single copy of Terraforming. Yeah, it's, we play field spells. A single copy of Mystic Mine. Uh, we're playing Terraforming. Uh, this can go out after game one, but during game one, I think you absolutely want this in your deck. There are decks where people do not play outs, and if they don't, we punish them by slapping down a Mystic Mine. If nothing else, it's a Force in the Gate, or it's Temporary Dark Ruler No More. Our final spell, a single copy of Call by the Grave. Hand traps are everywhere. It is that format at the moment, so therefore we want a way to counter those, and this is a good way of doing it. You could play cards like Triple Tactical Talents, but to be honest with you, I find the application on them is a bit weird. They're either insane or they're terrible, whereas this is just generically good all of the time. Unfortunately, it is a one-off, but it is what it is. And our final card for our main deck is Shadol Schism. It's the only Shadol card we're playing. I think all of the main deck Shadols are not great at the moment. Um, I think in formats where we play Super Poly and stuff, it's a little bit better. So we may see some more use of that in the coming weeks. Once all the Albaz stuff drops, um, there may be more application for it then. But right now, I think just Shadol Schism on its own is more than enough. You just want to be able to get into Winder. Winder's not that insane anyway, because a lot of people are playing stuff like Vashuda and ways to out it so they don't have to worry about it. Um, so yeah, less of an issue than it was before. Uh, therefore, we kind of just want a small package and nothing too dedicated to it. We don't want to cuck ourselves by having only that as an option, then when it's not available, losing in the game. That makes up our main deck now onto the extra deck. Uh, obligatory token. Out the way with you, Reese. Okay, single copy of Armourage, single copy of Secure Gardener. These are pretty self-explanatory in my opinion. Uh, you need them for the whole normal summon Alistair position. A single copy of Vert. This is for the DPE package, of course. Um, and then our final one that we've included, and this is the flex spot of the deck, so you can do what you want with this. And to be honest with you, when Super Poly comes back, which it may well be in a few weeks' time, we'll probably turn it into a Super Poly target. But for now, we're playing Dark the Dark Charmer. So the logic with this was that I was finding situations where mid to late game, I'd resolve um, Magician Souls and have nothing to do with it. I'd have nowhere to go with it. Um, turn one, it's not a problem, because if you resolve it, you can just go into Verte. 
But when you're late to game, you generally don't have that option. And there wasn't really any good Link 2s. I mean, I looked through every single Link 2 that exists and just kind of looked at what was applicable. You could play something like Dagda if you want to play that package, but I didn't want to play Scythe. Um, but if you want to, you can you can always use that instead. But this was sort of the only good generic Link 2 that you could play in the deck. I really wanted to play Alistair the Invoker of Madness because there's some really cool interactions with that card. But to be honest with you, you need to dedicate extra de more extra deck space to it because you need another way to get one of either Alistair or the souls off the field into a Link Monster so that you don't have the same type of attribute. So there was a little bit of a lock in there that we couldn't get around and I decided to go with Dark. This didn't come up at all. In fact, most of the time it ended up being a Prosperity target. But on paper, it seemed like a really good option. This, however, could be any number of things. If you just don't want an option there and you don't really care about it, having a random souls on the field, which I just didn't like the idea of someone piercing through it or something silly, um, then yeah, you, you know, you can do whatever you want with it. You could play uh, Raijin, for example, which is something that I'm not playing anymore. Um, you could play an additional Shadol target. You could play uh, any number of things. There's so many different options. At one point, this was an Entis. At one point, it was a Herald. It's had a bunch of different things. None of them have been super impactful and mattered. So this is your flex spot. This is just what I'm running at the moment. Now onto the rest here. So we've got a single copy of Mechaba, a second copy of Mechaba. Uh, two Mechaba, really important. Again, the, the second one could become a prosperity target if you don't think the game is going to go that far. But I think you just want it there because it's... I played it a one for a while and it wasn't great. So yeah, I just think the extra option there is something you want to try and have. Uh, we've got a single copy of Orgoades. This card is absolutely bonkers and so underappreciated. It's unreal. Um, incredibly strong. Really good way of dealing with their DPE as well if you can force it out then you can uh, Invocation and get rid of the DPU and turn it into an Orgoides, which is quite nice. A single copy of Purgatrio, or as I prefer it, Invoke Porcadio, because this card makes them think Porcadio! It's fucking insane. You summon it and usually you win. It's one of those cards. I wasn't running it before for a little while. In fact, the last bigger event I went to, I wasn't running it and I really regretted it actually because once I put it in, I knew what I was missing. The amount of games where you can just slap mine down as well, especially into a big board... And if you can make this under it, it's enough to clear the board and win, which is really, really cool. And it does come up more than you would think. So really, really good option. I would definitely recommend playing this. I think this is perfect. Again, there's some argument for the likes of, say, Kaliga, which you can pair with this, or Kaliga for just being a bit of a floodgate. The likes of Raijin is another good example. But to be honest with you, I think this is absolutely fine as it is. And I probably wouldn't change it. Our Shadows now, we've got a Winder, an App Cologne. And a construct. So usually these are the only two you actually see, but this does occasionally come up as well. It came up yesterday for me, uh, dealing with an ultimate conductor Tyranno, which was quite cute. Um, Apcolone's Apcolone, not one that you normally summon, but there are some some application for it. But normally it's there to be sent, so you can get into your schism turn one. And of course, Winda against the right decks, if you just play this, you auto win on the spot, and that does happen. That does come up. Again, it's not as impactful as it was before, but the games where it is impactful, it's just a win button. It becomes a scythe in and of itself. And then on to the rest of the extra deck. So, we've got a single copy of DPE. Uh, I don't really need to explain here. Um, Titanoclad, because it's a target, and yeah, it just gets you into your engine. Entis is another target for Nadir, and things like that, really good. And then finally, Omega. So, Omega's another way, again, to deal with... Uh, DPE or other graveyard threats or even put your own stuff back which is really really nice and does come up on occasion um, but it also means that if you do resolve gamma which we are playing in the side deck then you've got a really good target for that as well unless of course you want to go into anaconda instead but just another option been really really strong for me when it comes up and yeah just generally very good more stuff we don't really care about or is not important. Uh, and then on to the side deck. So this is a little bit up in the air at the moment. There's definitely some stuff I consider changing. But at the moment it works quite well. So I'm sticking with it until I figure out a better way to play. So a single copy of Pancratops. This is just, again, good generic go second card. There's actually fewer and fewer games in which I find this coming up that I want to play it. Um, but when it comes up, it's, yeah, it's really strong. There's certain decks where this is really very, very good against. Um, yeah, it just comes up. Less and less, I guess. Uh, we have triple copies of Droll and Lockbird. Um, yeah, I don't really know what to say about this. It's just, it's kind of the best other hand trap, isn't it? I mean, you can look at the likes of Ghost Bell. You can look at the likes of the Effect Vader. The thing with Droll and Lockbird is that it absolutely kills the decks that it's impactful against. It just ends turns, which is really, really strong. Stuff like Flunder, a deck that we have a you know particularly bad matchup against, this really helps deal with that in general. Uh, so I like it for that reason as well. 
Um, yeah, there's just weird decks that just go absolutely off, and if you don't stop them, then you're in real trouble. And this is just one of those cards to help deal with those. Like some Dinos, for example. Things like that. It can just be very strong against those. Yeah, just is what it is. We then have triple copies of Gamma. Nicely in gold rare, so I can telegraph to my opponent when I have one in hand. This card is so good at the moment. I think you have to play it. It's so strong. Yeah, I don't really need to elaborate on that. This card's just fucking nuts. Uh, single copy of Driver. Obviously, you have to play it for the package. Just is what it is. Triple copies of Evenly Matched. Um, yeah, this is okay, I guess. The problem with the Evenly Matched is that it doesn't come up a lot, but there's games where if you don't have it, you're guaranteed to lose. Like, at the moment, if you play into any of those big decks like Eldritch and things like that, if you don't have this, you're in real trouble because traditional back row removal just doesn't work against them. They have the Heavenly Prison guy, which plays around it all. Um... Yeah, it's just really, really strange. It does also have some weird other applications, like if you're playing to decks where they have tokens on the field, of course, they cannot banish the tokens, therefore, they have to get rid of everything else, which is quite a neat little interaction. It does come up. Again, it's just one of those cards I feel is really good to have there, and all the time I think about siding it out, and I just know that the day that I do, I'm going to play into one of those decks. I'm going to really, really rue the day. Uh, we then have Triple copies of Cosmic Cyclone at the moment. Some people are starting to switch back to Twin Twisters. I still think this is too strong not to play at the moment. For me, personally... I think it just helps deal with stuff like Scythe, which to be fair, there's an argument that this deck doesn't care about as much, and I know that that's going to sound a bit strange because we're playing a fusion-based deck, but you can just do Dogmatica stuff and survive, uh, which is really big. A lot of decks don't have that option. So you could theoretically play Twin Twisters, but I also think that this deck is... One of the strengths of it is being resourceful. And I'd rather make a one-to-one -one trade than be discarding stuff trying to blow out two cards that don't necessarily impact me in the same way if that makes sense i just find that this is really really strong again it could be twin twisters if you prefer i just think cosmic cyclone does a little bit more for me at the moment that, that i'm much happier to play with that and then finally we have a single copy of feather duster the ultimate plus card if it resolves especially into like a full back row there is no better feeling than activating this into a back row of five and they can't respond with anything just absolutely nuts this is potentially a flex spot, though. You could play a lot of other things. I was playing Red Reboot at one point. Uh, I've played a few other cards. But generally speaking, yeah, just very, very strong. There is... I would have liked to have found space for Nibiru in this side, but it's kind of a weird one in that it's either insane or it does absolutely nothing because they put the negate up first. I think that's going to continue to be the situation. What I will say is we're probably going to need to look to try and find space for Super Poly in this side in the future weeks because of course Despia is going to be everywhere and we're going to have, want to have ways to just deal with that deck in general. And that all this is all for today's video. Thank you very much for coming along and thank you very much for making it this far into the video. I do really appreciate you. You're one of the few who has so well done you. Hopefully by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, if you haven't already, you've considered hitting subscribe and potentially even the notification bell so you don't miss out on this kind of absolute fucking nonsense in future. Hopefully you've learned a thing or two from today's video ideas of what you could try out in your own deck. And of course, if you have any ideas about what's working really well for you, I'd love to hear those as well. Thanks again for coming along. I do really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next one.